So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory. Long Island's news alternative to the Newsday Cablevision News Monopoly. With Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we shoot at the Cablevision Studios in Hop Hog, New York. My guest today is Ernie Fazio. Uh, Mr. Fazio is running for Congress in the 3rd Congressional District. Uh, he's running, running for the seat of our former Congressman, Steve Israel. Mr. Fazio served as in the U.S. Coast Guard Reserve. He's a businessman with 30 years experience in the financial services arena. He's also a community leader and chairman of the Long Island Metro Business Action. And there's a, he's got a whole, a whole long resume of stuff that he did, but I don't want to take up too much time because I want to talk about what you want to do. So let's just start at the beginning, uh, Ernie. Tell me, what made you decide to want to run for Congress? Well, for many years, I've been a critic and a supporter of various things that the Congress was supposed to be doing, you know. And I find that it's frustrating because I, it, it's like the, the whole uh, arena in Washington is constipated. And I feel that I'm the kind of person that mixes it up with people. I, get, I have people in my uh, group, for example, who are diametrically opposed to my politics, but I am able to get them to see eye to eye because I have that kind of... a. Uh, uh, understanding of people, and I, I don't know, I, I'm, it's an egotistical thing to say, but I think I can make things move. Okay, let me ask, so what, what party, if any, are you running with? I'm, the, I'm for the party that's happening at your house on Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> well, that, that may not be a big party, and it may not, like, it may not help you win the election. You may need some other uh, some Actually, other party. I'm running unaffiliated, Gary. Okay. And the reason for why I'm running unaffiliated, because uh, I, f I don't, want to dance to the tune of the music. They tell you, and I did talk to the people in the major parties, they tell you what you're going to do and what you're going to say and how you're going to behave later. Right. And I don't think that's right. I don't want to go by anybody's uh, catechism, you know? Right. And I'll have my own thoughts on, on different topics. And sometimes it might look like I'm a liberal and other times it might look like I'm a conservative. But the issue itself will determine that, and the, the possible solutions will determine that. Right. Well, that's the nice thing about running as independent, is that you can be independent, and nobody's going to get mad if you're for something or against it. You can be your own person. But on the, on the other side, isn't it hard to be elected as an independent? It's nearly impossible. But, so, that's, but I'm, I'm going to have a voice. Okay. I'm going to be able to express myself on the various issues. Uh, and just like the Bernie uh, Sanders had about a chance of uh, a snowflake in hell, he's getting a lot of attention because he's saying the things that people want to hear. Right. So, uh, and not only want to hear, but he, he's, a, he's a man who's associated with those ideas for a long period of time, and they know that he's sincere. And the same thing is true in my case. I've been writing for about 25 years, and things that I've written are available. And you can read what I've said 10 years ago. So let me ask, so you say you're running and you don't think you, ha you have a good shot. So you're getting a soapbox? I don't know. I, the, re the, the reason why I'm running is not because I'm, I'm doomed to fail. Okay. But realistic, being realistic. realistically, there's a lot of uh, negatives are going against me. Right. So somebody, so I guess, I mean, one of the positives is that obviously you're on the show like this and you're talking and now you get your, your message out. And uh, I'm sure there's a and lot And I of didn't get on this show because of anything, but you saw somebody who was interesting. If you saw somebody who wasn't that interesting, you wouldn't put him right. on Well, show. I heard you speak, and I said, you know what, this guy's uh, an intelligent man, and whether I agree, I don't even know all your positions yet. I, I will find out some of them, but I said, you know what, you're an intelligent man, and what I, what I found about you when I heard you speak the first time was that you were passionate. And I like people who have passion. And like, you know what, there's something to be said for somebody who says, you know what, it may be a long shot, but I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do and I think I would do a good job. I would do a good job if, you're I not the, stop me. if I got the position. Uh, I don't worry about whether I, uh, about the, the possibilities. If I thought about that, I would have stayed home. Right. But I don't want to do that. Okay. I, you know, I mean, 
I've had a number of successes in my life. I, you know, how do you, as a 26-year-old, fly into northern Vermont in the middle of winter and buy a 300-acre plot of land, uh, a, a tree forest? Right. And, and unless you, people say, what are you, crazy? You don't even know what you're doing. Of course I didn't know what I was doing. I started, I learned, and, uh, you know, it's a st <laughs> I'll tell you a story. When I got out of the Coast Guard, my next door neighbor said, what are you going to do for work? I said, I don't know. He said, why don't you come down to the garment district? He, so he says, uh, I come into the, the, I said, what am I going to do? He says, I don't know, something. So uh, he takes me over to his friend's place, and he says, they, he says, they make a, uh, they give me a job as a, as a dispatcher. So I'm trying to figure out where to put the trucks, and is it 34th Street or is it 9th Street? What is it? And how do I make this work so that it's efficient? And I, said, I finally says, I can't do this. I'm so confused. And there was this old guy in the corner, and he says, he says, uh, listen, kid, don't worry. He says, you get a job, you hang around, you learn. Uh -huh. And that's where I've been ever since. <laughs> well, it works for you. <laughs> he turned out to be the owner of the company. Oh, <laughs> maybe you should have stuck around. Uh, you said of uh, Congressman Israel, whose, whose seat you are running for, uh, that we're losing uh, a good rep. We are. So what, what made him, in your, in your mind, uh, a good congressman? Well, what made him a good congressman was the fact that he, did, he liked to do client service, things that help the people that he's serving. He hated ca uh, garnering cash. That was what he was required to do four hours a day. And that, that really takes the heart out of a guy. Right. And, th and, and I understand why he left. I don't plan to do that. I hope to create a situation where I have an internet uh, that keeps giving me money as I go along so that I can run a, 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 a very frugal campaign. Right but enough because I have the ability to communicate. Okay, let me guess, let, now let's get into why people should, should vote for you. Um, what would your, the agenda of Ernie Fazio look like? If you come in- They should get, vote for me because I need a job. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people looking need jobs and, and they're looking for you to, to create them. So well, we, can go with, we, can, we can go with the jobs first. So since you brought it up, what are you gonna do to no. help people get jobs on Long Island. No, I, I don't need a job. I had a job. <laughs> I'm retired. Okay. And, and job is over. Okay, so be, the, but speaking about jobs, what, what are we going to do about jobs? Well, the, or, or, or should the Congress do anything and just oh, let, or let the free market fall where it, where it is? Well, I'm, I'm in two camps. I like the free market. I am uh, basically a capitalist. But there's a part of me that isn't. There's a part of me that says you have to make things happen. You have to grease wheels. Now, uh, one of the things I've been doing for the last 12 years is working with the people who invented the maglev train. Which is? It's a magnetically levitated train that goes very, very fast. And the design uh, principles have been copied, and they built it in China, and they built it in, in, uh, in, in, in Japan. Japan. I think I was but I was on the one in China. Was, we were going 274 miles an hour, and it was quieter than this room. Right. And it's amazing. But their technology could never carry trucks. And if you can't carry trucks, you can't make money. So it would be a loser in this country. But our guys built superconducting magnets into their uh, units. And those will carry two 50-ton trucks and move it at 300 miles an hour in an aerodynamic envelope. Now, that's how you make money with something that's good. Now, what do you need? You don't need the government to build it, but you do need the government to build a demonstration project for about $20 million to show that it, it works. Mm -hmm. We have two miles of rail out in Riverhead that the, the, uh, the town of Riverhead has given to us to, to do it if we can build the, the modules. And if we show that we can lift that kind of, uh, it, the going fast is, is uh, you know, academic. Uh, because you can move it very, very fast because electricity moves at 186,000 miles per second, the speed of light. Okay. Now, the, the, your practical speed is around 300 miles an hour because what happens is you hit a wall of, of air that, that creates uh, such a resistance that if you want to go from 300 to 350, you probably have to, have to double the amount of power to use it. And by the way, it's very efficient. Okay, so so you're saying one of the things that you want to do is bring this to the island. Well, that's only one thing. Well, give give us some other things about about creating jobs here on Long. Because I mean, will you, will you do you agree that we have a problem that we're losing jobs here on Long Island? Good we're losing jobs? jobs. But what about if we uh, made the uh, the the uh, 
the national the grid, the power grid around the country uh, more robust so that it couldn't be hacked. Today, on my radio show, I had a guy who was a cybersecurity expert, and this would take a lot of uh, technical people. Who, who's better at technical people than Long Island? Right. I mean, we we can a lot of smart people here. Yeah. We could <laughs> write the book. Right. Now that's why I think, and that's another major, major project. If we do maglev, we'll put a few thousand people to work, but we'll put twenty million people to work across the country. The uh, that uh, I don't know what we'd do with the cyber uh, protection, but it was, it's probably ten million people, right. and these are high-paid jobs. This is not, you know, you know, waiters and dishwashers and wonderful. Uh, I mean, people do that kind of work. But they don't make uh, a lot of money. It's hard to live here in Long Island making those wages. Yeah. Um, what about the Iran nuclear deal? What, what's your feeling on the Iran nuclear deal? Since that's going to be, it has if you do get watched. it, that's going to come up, obviously. It has to be watched like a hawk. Well, were, were you a supporter of it? Yes, you, I was. Okay. I was definitely a supporter of it because um, I, know, uh, I know wealthy Ra Iranian people from that country that are as sophisticated as you and I, and a lot of, and probably a lot more than you and I in many cases, they are, they are probably the best educated, most technically oriented people in that region outside of the Israelis. In fact, I think the Israelis fear them most, not by, because they're going to get bombed by them, but because they're going to be competitors of a first class nature. Mm -hmm. And 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 to me. So you don't think their fear their fear is real of Iran getting uh, get taking all this billions of dollars that we gave them, developing the nuclear weapons, and then saying, okay, now we're not doing the deal, but we have the weapons. We're violating. I mean, we're already starting to see them violating the deal. The, I said they have to be watched. Right. They have. But to what be, do we do? I mean, now we've given them the money. No, we haven't. With that money is still being escrowed out. You okay. Know. So you don't none of the money has been released yet. No, it's the partial. Okay. And it's because now we're hearing today, you know, on the on the news that they're already testing uh, nuclear uh, missiles, and they're saying, well, that wasn't part of the deal. Obama lied about that. I don't. Uh, I don't really have an answer for you, Gary. On that. Well, I don't know if there really is an answer. If there is an answer, right? But but your your feeling is that it that it was a good deal. And I feel my feeling is from the people that I know in from uh, the Iranian uh, country is that. They want to be part of the world. They want to be able to buy and sell and trade and, and travel. Right. They want to be considered part of the community. Okay. They are not. They are not Syria. They are not Egypt. They are not any like uh, Saudi Arabia. They don't have a structure in their societies that's so uh, as restrictive as those. They they have a what do you call them. Um, uh, a government that's dominated by the religious people, those people are losing ground every single day. And we got to hope for the best that they are going to lose all of the ground eventually. Right. And, w and the only way they'll lose all of the ground if we facilitate the rest of that community into uh, the, being a part of the, the family of nations. Okay. What about, I mean, <laughs> going from uh, international, come back to Long Island again. What, what about rising tax? Well, it's not just the island because you'd be doing the whole country, but specifically on Long Island, what, what, what can we do to stem this tide of, of raising taxes where we're just so high where it's becoming impossible for children to live here anymore? Well, you know, Steve Levy and uh, uh, Fitzpatrick, I, I hosted a meeting with them, and they talked about the some of the remedies to make uh, things more life more livable on Long Island by reducing taxes. But as long as you're paying policemen uh, two hundred thousand dollars in retirement, we ain't gonna make it. Right. We can't afford it. It's you, if you're a policeman and you pack up, the, you know, and you're at one hundred and twenty-five or one hundred thirty thousand dollars a year in income, and you pack on a whole bunch of uh, of of overtime, right. you could retire with the hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they're forty-two years old. Right. Can you, who's going to die at the sixty-five like we used to? Right. They're going to live to eighty-five or ninety. Who knows? And we're going to be paying the bill all of those years. Right. So I mean, that's definitely one one of the uh, one well, of the issues. Well, it's a what, very what, important one. Eh? No, it, it is. I I don't disagree. It's and it's a, and it's a big when issue. you when you get a criminal like uh, uh, Scalos or. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Silver. Silver. 
and you pay them ninety-five thousand dollars in uh, in pension after they've been screwing us all of that time. Does that make sense? Right. We have to change that. Right. We got to find out why our uh, Senator uh, Flanagan and uh, uh, Senator Laval and all of those guys aren't go going on board with with uh, Fitzpatrick and making that happen. So you would join with with the uh, with the Republicans on that aspect. Well, for, there for I am, a converted conservative. So, uh, so <laughs> right. You know what I mean, Gary? It's all a bunch of baloney. Right. This, you know, what are you a conservative? It doesn't matter. But, but those, but right, but it's the conservatives who are out there pushing for those type of reforms. Well, on Long Island, I, on, I'll say on Long Island. Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick, is, Fitzpatrick a cons is, is a conservative, right. and he's pushing for that kind of result. Right. The others call themselves conservatives too, but they ain't going to uh, upset the Vote cart because the unions that can put a, a lot of pressure on them are going to put a lot of pressure on them. And if you don't have the chutzpah, I'm sorry, I'm not Jewish, but uh, <laughs> I'm allowed to use that. I, I was married into a Jewish family for all, many, many years. So, but if they don't have the chutzpah, it ain't going to happen, Gary. Right. It's got to have, you have to have people with character. And, uh, and it, you know, Paul Townsend, who was my dear friend and mentor, he used to say, throw the bums out. You know, take the ins and make them the outs. Now, maybe that's a little too general, but you know what? Maybe people get stale. Right. Well, we definitely need some change. What about uh, Obamacare? And again, that would be that's going to be an issue that's going to be coming up, especially if we get a Republican president. What, what's your feeling on Obamacare? Should it be repealed? If it should, should it be replaced with something? What, what's? I'm going to give you a one-word answer. That's a pretty complicated question for a one-word answer, but it go, go for it. Okay. okay. That's two words, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count. <laughs> so, okay, so it sucks, no, but, but, but what needs to be done? Because obviously... Universal health care, okay. uh, single payer, just like Medicare. Now, how do you pay for it? Well, you pay for it with, with uh, instead of having paying premiums, you pay taxes. But the taxes that to, to, to make Medicare are about half that would are for premium. Right. So that makes sense. But there's another place. You know, if you are critical of, uh, of, of military spending, you become anti-military and anti-soldier uh, uh, and all that stuff. President Truman, in the middle of the war, the biggest war we ever fought, he did an investigation on the procurement uh, of, of war material. It saved hundreds of millions of dollars by going into their books and finding out how we were getting screwed. Now, you can't do that today, otherwise you're un-American. President, uh, uh, President Eisenhower warned us about the industrial uh, complex, the military industrial complex. And then we had the Cold War, so we had an excuse for building up all this uh, material. And now we, we, we got used to the idea. And now we're stuck. Well, we got to re-examine that whole thing. Okay. And I would uh, go for uh, doing an investigation of Northrop Grumman and all of the big suppliers. So basically you're saying get, get, we would get the money from finding out where we're wasting the money. Yeah, well, we, have, we spend a lot of money on, on Medicare and we spend a lot of money on Social Security. And they're looking at those pots to get the money from to, to, raise, to, to lower the taxes. Well, nobody's talking about the $750 billion that's in the budget for the, for the defense programs or the other quarter of a billion dollars that goes out to contractors. It's not even considered in the, the, in the program, but it's there. And, we, and you know, just because they're friends of, uh, of people in high places like uh, Dick Cheney when, uh, with Halliburton and all the other contractors, those things have to be examined. But let me, let me ask this. The people watching it, and in, in America, when people hear universal health care, they all of a sudden they scream, he's a socialist, get him the hell out of here. I don't care so if they what, call me a socialist. What, what do you I have really, to say? Is it socialism? I, do you care if somebody wants yes, to Yes, it's socialism. Okay. But we've been socialists ever well, since. Ex explain that. When you say we, we've been socialists, because been, right now everybody says, no, social. What, what do you mean by we've been socialists? Well, George Washington said we want to be a maritime uh, nation. So he taxed the people, and he built lighthouses. Now, 
that's socialism. You know, if people want, if the maritime industry wants to be, uh, have lighthouses so they can function with ships, let them pay for it themselves. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have that attitude. His attitude was you build the, the lighthouses so people can function and we become rich that way. So we've been socialists for it. But what was it socialism about? Wasn't it to support capitalism? Mm -hmm. So would you, would you say that, that health care in the United States should be a right? It absolutely should be a right. Okay. I mean, there's no reason that this country, as being a, a first-class country, and I believe it is, should be look like a third-world country when it comes to health care. Right. And, you know, you'll have people that will tell you, oh, you can go to the emergency room and you can get health care. And, you know, yeah, by that time, you're ready to die. Right. Yeah, it's, it's too late. And, 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 you, and what they say is, you know, people say that all the time. I say, but it's, it's not free because guess what? They still give you a bill. And if you have a house but don't have insurance, they're going to have a lien on it. They're going to go after your taxes. They're going to mess up your credit report. And people are afraid to go because they are afraid to get socked. I mean, if you, if you don't own anything and you're illegal, yeah, we, you are covered. Yeah. Because you don't care. <laughs> you right. have nothing to lose. Well, if you do care. Well, you're not getting the care. But that like you, you said, it's an emergency basis. It's not right. a, a preventive uh, you, basis. No, I'm, I'm in a position where I have wonderful, wonderful health care anyway, and I got Medicare. I have nothing to worry about. You know, I mean, except my health right, right. itself. I don't have to worry about the bills being paid. You know, and you know, and these people who Ann Randy and people. One of the things I did when I was a young man was I read Ann Rand. And, you know, and I was so enamored with the idea that you stand up for yourself and you do for yourself. Anne Rand, for the record, died in a hospital collecting, uh, uh, getting her bills paid by Medicare. Uh -huh. Now, um, hey, you never know where you're going to, you never know where you're going to end up in life. You never know where you're going to um, end up. We don't have too much time left, so I want to get a couple more uh, issues out there I wanted to ask about. What about terrorism? What can we do about terrorism? Uh, what about the president not saying uh, that the problem is, uh, you know, Islamic terrorism? And, you know, what, what's your feeling on, on terrorism? I'm not sure. But I, I agree with the president on the, the lack of the term. Okay. okay. So, you know, I'm not going to really address that. I do think that these people are desperately bad criminal people, and they can all be handled by the criminal justice if they're not shot. So you believe in treating it as a crime, or...? If you get caught in Brooklyn with a, p a plan to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge, or say, you're brought into court and you're put in jail for the rest of your life, that's okay with me. But what about, the, isn't the idea to, to, to keep the terrorism from being on, on our soil, so do we do more uh, abroad, what you know? What about limiting yes. the, the borders? As you Here's know, how you you don't limit the borders by building a wall across Mexico because that's not where they're coming from. They're coming in on airplanes and they got visas and they got special visas that are, are promoted by the companies that want them here. Those, there's where you have a, a better chance of getting a terrorist than over the Mexican border, where you might get a poor guy who wants to pick your uh, strawberries. Right. Well, I think that that was for a different reason. I don't know if the wall is so much to, for for terrorism. Or he you know, needs but, a building uh, project. Right. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> what What about red light cameras? I know that's not really going to be a national uh, an issue, but maybe it is because some people would argue that uh, it's it's uh, unconstitutional because you can't con can confront your accuser. But just sort of philosophically, people are watching the show and they're saying, "I want to see where this guy is coming from." And you're wearing red. What 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 what's your thought on the red light cameras? The red light cameras are, uh, are, are a fraud. First of all, who's behind the wheel? I have a car. I have a wife. I have three sons. Um, the kids come and go. They borrow the car. But the argument could be when you get a parking ticket, we, we don't know who parked it, but whoever owns the car is responsible. So it's the same, you know, it's the same thing on that, but it's just... You, but you don't have the right to, to con confront your accuser. I mean, you think they should go? You think, the, you know, what, what's your feeling? The difference about? between that and the parking ticket is the parking ticket was put on the car. Mm -hmm. And you know you got a ticket. Right. All right? And maybe it's a small difference. Right. But the, 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 the red light camera, I don't know who did it. So you're against the red light cameras? Oh, absolutely. You're on the record, you're against the red light cameras. What about minimum wage? Whether, whether they're talking now. Minimum wage, I'm no fan of. But I'll tell you one thing. It, we crush unions and then say we don't want to give a minimum wage. What I had as a union leader as when I was a young man was the power to deal with you, my employer, and say, Gary, my men need $15 an hour. 
and you had the ability to say, well, I can't afford it, and you, we go back and forth and back and forth, and then we get $14 or $13 or whatever it is that we negotiate. We don't have, we, what we've done in this country is we've done everything we can to crush unions. Now, by example, let me give you a, a juxtaposition here. In Germany, unions are very strong. Workers are very well treated, paid very, very well. And on the board of directors, you have a couple of guys who are elected by the union, not by the company. They don't get paid by the company. They get paid by the union. But they're on the board, and they have something to say about policy. The people in the, uh, in, in the field have something to say how things are manufactured. And it's all in their better interest, so that the company is profitable and that the, the men make more money. So, so your your feeling is we shouldn't be a minimum wage. No, but we got to we got to nurture bit of the unions back to the strength that they were, so that and they. But can how do we the, how do we do that? How does how does stop the government making laws that say to make it difficult for the unions to uh, to operate? Okay, um, we don't have that much time left, so I'm going to hit you with one out, out of left field. And I did this at the end in case you said, "Oh, where'd this come from?" Now I'm going to walk off the set. Uh, it's not that bad, Ernie. <laughs> really, well, what, something I'm passionate about is the presumption of shared parenting, and I don't know if if you've been through a divorce, but on Long Island. Uh, we have a big problem with uh, the judicial system out here, and it's set up to fight for, for custody of children. And, and I'm a supporter of, on the national level, uh, having a law with a presumption of shared parenting because I believe it's a, an equal rights issue. Uh, what's your feeling on a presumption of shared parenting? It's not something I've given any thought to. Okay. And, you know, I had two successful marriages. My first wife passed away, and I'm now in a second marriage. And uh, I have no, you know, it's, it's nothing I dealt with so personally. Understood. Okay. And so uh, it's hard to have an opinion on something you really haven't thought about. Right. In about two minutes, it's a tough one, but what about the heroin problem here on Long Island and nationally? What, what can the federal government do or should they do to try to uh, cur curb this problem? Well, there's probably a few things that can be done. One of the things that could be done is uh, we shouldn't be giving out uh, painkillers like we do. It's a little bit too, uh, it's, it's, it's like uh, bringing your right to that area. But um, the, we don't need to treat these people like criminals, and I think we're coming to that. Right. We're coming to the fact that they're, they're patients and not, not criminals. Right. Okay, well, if anybody wants to get involved in your campaign, uh, because I know you need a lot of help, and, and one of the things, because you don't have all the support of the major parties, I'm sure money is, is something that you need just to get your message out. So people watching this show, how do they get involved in your campaign if they'd like to? Well, they can go to my uh, campaign website. Which is? Which is... And we'll uh, put that in the bottom of the screen, right, right about there. Okay. <laughs> Ernie Fazio for Congress, uh, dot com. Okay. You have a Facebook page? People I have a Facebook, Facebook page. Okay. And, um, and, are they and what do you need help doing? I mean, is it all money? What, what do you need? Well, one screen? of the things that I need is a small army of uh, volunteers to go out and get signatures. So, no, Ernie, I, I, some, need, I need about You seven. need signatures. If somebody's registered... Democrat or, or, or with one of the major parties, Democrat, Republican, or minor in independents, can they help you? Absolutely. Or do they have to be unaffiliated? No, with they the don't board of have elections? to be unaffiliated. You see, if you're a Democrat, you have to be a Democrat to collect for, for the Democratic Party, and you have to be a notary. They're, one of the things they, there's a little leniency with an independent uh, candidacy is that. Uh, I don't need notaries to collect. All I need is people who are registered to vote in the state of New York, not even in the district. Okay. And they don't have to be affiliated Which, with What is your party. district, just so people know? It, I, I mentioned a third, but that doesn't it's tell third, me what it encompasses. It's the third congressional district. It's the one that was occupied by uh, Steve Israel, or it still is, actually. But it goes from uh, Flushing, Queens, to Kings Park. It, you know, that's a small part of, uh, of Smithtown. It's a pretty big area, but it's gerrymandered so that it's pretty democratic. Right, right. You know, which is another, that's another show. So will you be in the debates, Ernie? I hope so. Okay. And the, and the news, newspapers, uh, as long as you get on the ballot. Now, given the conversation we had, you think I might do all right? So... <laughs> <laughs> listen, I think you'll do all right in, in the debates. You know, listen, it's refreshing for a lot of people to say this guy's not affiliated. And even, you know, they could say hey, it's a protest vote. I want to, you know, get my message out there. I'm Gary Jacobs, and thank you for joining us at Long Island Backstory. Please go to our Facebook page, Long Island Backstory, like us. And if you like the show that you're seeing, share it. And if you have any ideas for shows, please send us a message. Thank you very much, Ernie. Thank you, Gary. Great to meet you.